So, what we are expected to study is regarding the transmission of impulses in synapse and we have to also see how this, um, what are the different chemicals involved in this synaptic transmission which are known by the name neurotransmitters. So basically synaptic transmission is the process by which the neurotransmitters are released by the axon terminal of a neuron and bind and activate with the receptors on the dendron. Because in any synapse, there are two neurons are involved. One neuron is the axon, it will be connected with another neuron, a portion of another neuron on by the name dendron. So basically, the meeting place of an axon and a dendron is known by the name synapse. So that is basically a synapse. Now here you can see that there are two terms are involved. One is known as a presynaptic neuron, other is known by the name postsynaptic neuron. Okay. So in the picture you can see that this is the presynaptic neuron or presynaptic cell and this is the postsynaptic neuron or the uh, postsynaptic cell. So the, the neuron which is contributing the axon part is known by the name presynaptic neuron and neuron which is contributing the dendron part or dendrite part is known by the name postsynaptic neuron. So always the transmission is from axon to dendron. So it is from presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic, it is a one way traffic. From presynaptic neuron to postsynaptic it is that that traffic or message transmission will never take place in the opposite direction only from presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic neuron. Now here you can find a small space and this space is known by the name synaptic cleft. Cleft means actually a gap. So there is a gap between presynaptic neuron as well as the postsynaptic neuron. That is a physical gap. That, the, that is the presynaptic neuron and postsynaptic neuron are not touching with each other. Just like an electrical wire will be touching with another electrical wire for the transmission of electricity. There is no physical touching or there is no physical contact. There is a small millimeter gap is there. That is known by the name synaptic, synaptic cleft. So normally what is happening is that here you can find that at the end of the presynaptic neuron there are certain vesicles and these vesicles are carrying certain chemicals which we call by the name neurotransmitter. Okay, so when one uh, nervous message or nerve impulse is reaching here, this uh, vesicle will be attaching with uh, the cell membrane and will be releasing, these are the vesicles that will be attaching with the cell membrane and finally releasing this neurotransmitter into this gap. So here you can see that the flow of neurotransmitter across the synaptic gap okay and this neurotransmitter will be getting attached with the certain protein receptors which are present on the surface of the postsynaptic neuron okay when this neurotransmitter will be attaching to the postsynaptic receptor that will again restart another set of impulse Okay, this is how the normally the message transmission across a neuronal pathway is going on. So there are three major uh, uh, components here, presynaptic neuron, then synaptic cleft will be actually containing this neurotransmitter which are released by the presynaptic neuron and there will be a postsynaptic neuron and that will be containing certain protein receptors. So, it is on when this neurotransmitter is binding with the postsynaptic neuron, this uh, restarting of this impulse will be again starting. So, neurotransmission is essentially a process of communication between two neurons. So, that is what we known by the neurotransmission. In response to a threshold action potential, a neurotransmitter is released at the 
presynaptic neuron. So this is what is happening. When one action potential or one message is reaching here in the form of these vesicles and that will be finally attaching with cell membrane and the vesicles will be uh, rest open and finally releasing the neurotransmitter into the synaptic gap or synaptic plug. So that is what is happening. So in relation to neurotransmitter may then move across the synapse and may be detected by and bind with the receptors of the post synaptic neuron. Here you can see that these are the neurotransmitters which are released and they will be binding with the post synaptic receptor which are present on the surface of the post synaptic uh, uh, neuro cell membrane or the post synaptic neuron. Then the binding of neurotransmitter may influence post synaptic neuron in either an inhibitory or excitatory. There is another important point here. Here you can see that when this neuron is binding with the receptor, it can send a message. And that message can be of two types. Either a what we call excitatory message. Excitatory message means the, the message will be increasing in, in its uh, uh, stimulus, uh, stimulus strength. So when a, uh, the strength of the stimulus is increasing during this binding process, we call it as excitatory, excitatory stimulus. When the strength of stimulus is decreasing, we call it by the inhibitory, inhibitory, that is the inhibitory effect. So these are the two types of effect. Either it can be producing an increasing stimulus or it can lead to a decreasing strength in the stimulus. So that way we can call it as either inhibitory or excitatory. Then binding a neuron transmitter to a receptor in the postsynaptic neuron can trigger either short term changes such as changes in the membrane potential called postsynaptic potential or long term changes by the activation of signal cascade. We will see that. See, when this uh, 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 neurotransmitter is binding with this one,
Okay, we will continue. So, what we were talking about is that when a neurotransmitter is coming and uh, leaving the uh, receptor, there will be a, a production of a stimulus which can be either inhibitory or excitatory based on the type of neuron. A neuron transports its information by way of an action potential. The last class you have studied what is an action potential. You may be remembering what is a resting potential which is minus 70 when 100 uh, calcium ions or sodium ions are entering into it. There is a change from minus 70 it becomes plus 30 that is what we call as the action potential. So this is what is basically an action potential. When nerve impulse arrives at the synapse, it may cause the release of a neurotransmitter which includes an another neuron. A postsynaptic neuron may receive inputs from many neurons, both excitatory and inhibitory. Excitatory and inhibitory influence are summed, and if the net effect is inhibitory, the neuron will less likely to fire. And if the net effect is excitatory, neuron will more likely to fire. I will show you that for what here. See here you can see that. See this is a presynaptic neuron and this is a postsynaptic neuron. Okay, you can see that. <laughs> the, the, this is the presynaptic neuron, this is the postsynaptic neuron. See here you can see that one presynaptic neuron is connected with the several postsynaptic neuron. Okay. And sometimes uh, what we are seeing is that the, the some of the neurons, uh, some of the neurons will be producing positive or excitatory uh, messages. Some of the neurons, may, maybe out of four neurons, two neurons are producing positive strength or, or excitatory strength or increasing strength. Other two neurons are producing decreasing strength. So it will be added up and what is the net effect will be finally transmitted to the next two neuron. Here you can see that this is another case. Here these two will be producing sometimes inhibitory. These two may be producing excitatory. Maybe inhibitory neuron may be producing plus 10. Excitatory neuron may be producing plus 11. So the net effect is minus 1. That a minus 1 will be actually transmitted to the next neuron. So that is the message that is written here. Um, excitatory or inhibitory uh, influences are summed at a time. How likely a neuron e e is to fire depends on how far its membrane potential is from threshold potential. The voltage at which action potential is triggered because of enough voltage dependent channels uh, are activated. So the net in which sodium current exceeds uh, all outward current. Here you can see that this is how the all process is actually going on. Here you can see that when some calcium ions are entering into it, it is this calcium ions which are actually triggering the flow of this neurotransmitter and finally calcium ions will be coming and meeting with the cell membrane and um, when the time comes cell membrane in a rupture and the neurotransmitter will be released to the uh, synaptic cleft. So this is how the uh, some features are there. Now what we have to see is that this also we have discussed already. Certain important properties are there for synapse. One and these properties are uh, these uh, uh, characteristics are known as the properties of synapse. You can expect a question on what do you mean by the properties of synapse. So one is that uh, one important property of the synapse is that it is conducting new uh, messages in one direction only. I already told you it's a one-way traffic, one-way conduction or a unidirectional conduction. In a chemical synapse, impulse get conducted from presynaptic neuron to postsynaptic neuron. Here you can see that always in this direction, presynaptic to postsynaptic neuron. Okay. So that is one property of the synapse. Second is there is a synaptic delay. And uh, is the uh, uh, synaptic delay is for neurotransmitter to get released from synaptic vesicle when action potential has reached the presynaptic region. That is, um, here you can see that 
when these uh, messages are reaching here, it will take some milliseconds to rupture the uh, uh, membrane and release the neurotransmitter. It is not immediately taking place. Just in a lightning speed, some millisecond delay will be there. That delay is actually used for the rupturing of the synaptic um, uh, uh, the membrane here. And that delay is what we call synaptic delay. So it is used to get released from the synaptic vesicle when action potential has reached the presynaptic region. Then it also needs to pass through the synaptic gap. This is the synaptic gap. To pass across this gap, it also takes certain time. So that is known by the name is synaptic gap and act on the postsynaptic region to bring about the production of action potential in postsynaptic uh, neuron. That is, yeah, when neuron, when messages are reaching this end, uh, it, if the messages are reaching this end at the 10th second, it will be, it will not be immediately transmitted at the 10th second here. Maybe it will be transmitted only after one second. So, at the 10th second, the message reaches here. From here, it will be starting at 11th second. So, there will be one second, millisecond delay will be there. I am just giving you an example. That is known by the name synaptic delay. Okay, then, and, what, and this is known as a synaptic delay, which is normally 0.5 millisecond. I told you, once a millisecond is actually 0.5 millisecond at every normal synapse. So, what is the um, um, uh, unit of, what is the uh, duration of synaptic delay is 0.5 millisecond. Here also you can see the same thing. What is a neurotransmitter is shown here, calcium channels are shown here, uh, synaptic cleft is shown here, post synaptic neuron is shown here. So, next, all picture in a completely different way. Then another property of the neuron is that it has a fatigability, fatigability. When synapses are continuously stimulated, after some time due to exhaustion, exhaustion means uh, all finished, that is the meaning of the exhaustion of neurotransmitter, at post presynaptic terminal, impulse fails to get conducted. Here you can see that. If so many action potential are reaching here, but there is, a, there is only very limited number of synaptic vesicles inside the cell membrane or inside the cell. If all the cell, uh, cell vesicles or new synaptic vesicles like this are used up, then there are, there are only four, four or five synaptic vesicles. If ten messages are coming there, what will be the so only five, five messages can produce the sign or can cause the rupture of the synaptic vesicle. Other five will not be able to do that. So if too many impulses or too many action potentials are coming one after a time continuously, after some time the sign this presynaptic terminal or presynaptic end will be getting tired. We call it by the name fatigue. And that situation is known by the name fatigability. When it is tired or fatigued, then it won't be producing any impulse transmission. So that is another property of a synapse. Synapsic transmission involves fatigability. And this result in fatigue occurring at the level of synapse. And fatigue is a temporary phenomenon. What is it? After some time, just like we get tired after of our resting for some time, we again become normal. We can again do the work. Just like that, the fatigue or tiredness of the synapse is only a temporary phenomenon. It will not be lasting for a long time. Then another property is regarding the convergence and divergence. And here I have shown you some picture like this. This is the convergence and other one is the divergence. We will see what is a convert. Impulse from one presynaptic neuron may end on, end on many postsynaptic region of large number of neurons and this is called the divergence. Here you can see that this is only one presynaptic neuron. It is actually splitting into several, it is uh, splitting its uh, messages into four postsynaptic neurons. So there is only one presynaptic neuron, the messages will be diverging 
or transmitted into four postsynaptic neurons. We call it by the name divergence. So during divergence, normally the signal strength will be normally decreasing. And opposite situation is convergence. What is happening? Here four synaptic, presynaptic neurons are there. They will be actually meeting with the only single postsynaptic neuron. So from post four presynaptic neuron, signal sense will be coming to the and added up. Uh, that means each one contributing five millivolt from four of four postsynaptic uh, presynaptic neuron, total 20 millivolts will be there. So the strength in here will be 20 millivolt. So it is an excitatory state. Here it is inhibitory, mostly inhibitory, because it is decreasing. So that is one way, uh, there is another peculiarity of the uh, synapse. Synaptic neurons exhibit convergence as well as divergence. Con divergence means one presynaptic neuron will be splitting its messages into different postsynaptic neuron. Other case is just opposite. Several presynaptic neuron will be bringing together its messages and transmitting into one single postsynaptic neuron. So that effect is known by the name convergence as well as divergence. Then another property is regarding the summation. When a stimulus is subthrough, stimulus of subthrough strength is applied. There will not be development of any action potential in postsynaptic neuron. But uh, but if many subthreshold stimuli are applied at the presynaptic neuron, effect of these stimuli can add it up and lead to action potential in the postsynaptic neuron. And this is known by the name divergence. Here you can see that. For example, for the other uh, 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 region of synaptic neuron uh, cleft, for a presynaptic neuron to uh, rupture and release the uh, neurotransmitter, a minimum strength of 10 millivolt is needed. Okay, imagine that. But if the signal strength is only 5 or 6, so the, the it will not be producing any, any rupture of the or any signal here. Because the minimum intensity is below the required, required strength. And the required strength is known as the threshold strength. So if it is below the required or threshold strength, there will not be any release of neurotransmitter. Because it is only, the required is 10 units, we have it, there is only 5 units. Now another unit, another signal is also coming, it has only 2 units. Still, it is 5 plus 2, only 7. Then another comes, it has 3 units. So 5 plus 2 plus 3 total it becomes 10 units. So from 10, from 10, uh, 3, 3 neurons, uh, a total of 10 millivolt is coming. That will be adding together and producing the uh, final, uh, now the, uh, producing the release of the neurotransmitter. And this is known by the summation. So what is the point is that if many subthreshold stimuli are applied at the free sign application, Subthreshold means below the threshold frequency or threshold signal. They will be adding together and finally reaching the required strength. When required strength is reached, it will be producing the development of a, uh, a neuron at the postsynaptic neuron. And this phenomena is known by the name summation. So that is what is shown here. This is exhibited here. This is a signal of subthreshold intensity. So this, there is one, there is another two. When these two are added up, finally reaching the uh, uh, required strength, it will be producing a signal, so it will be producing action potential or release of neurons. And this is another example of that. So this is how the all process of summation is actually going on. Then we have one more feature that is excitation or inhibition. Impulse conduction across the synapse may either stimulate or inhibit the activity of postsynaptic neuron. We have already told you about that. If the signal strength is in increasing, we call it as excitatory. For example, in the use of uh, convergence, normally signal strength can increase. 
in the case of divergence signal strength can decrease so depending on the uh, type of uh, signal type of strength of the signal whether it is increasing or decreasing we use the term excitation or inhibi inhibition if there is a stimulatory influence then there is a production of action potential in the postsynaptic neuron and <coughs> if it has inhibitory influence there is no action potential generated in the postsynaptic neuron so that, that is for example here you can see that here there are 10 units 10 millivolt is there and it will be splitting into development of, of uh, 2.5 units in each presynaptic neuron but the minimum strength needed is 10 millivolt so if it is there if there is no 10 millivolt in, in each neuron each postsynaptic neuron there will not be any message transmission here Okay, one 10 millivolt current reach, reached here, that is split into four, 2.5 each. But for the production of this uh, uh, action potential here, minimum 10 millivolt is needed. So then there will not be any transmission, and that transmission will end here. So that is the message that uh, that is written here. When if it is inhibitory influence, there is no action potential generation in the postsynaptic neuron. So these are the different properties of action potential and we will see what are the different types of neurotransmitter in our next class. So today we will stop with here.